The Year of the Hawkeye is uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first E-2A Hawkeye that was delivered to the Navy 50 years ago. Throughout uh, 2014, uh, we're going to be uh, recalling various milestones and accomplishments of the E-2 aircraft uh, throughout the years. And uh, in 2014 specifically, it's uh, interesting that we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the E-2 Hawkeye and also the initial operational capability uh, later in the year of the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye. For the community itself, we have a long history of providing airborne early warning capability to the fleet. For those of us that grew up flying the airplane, uh, and uh, me specifically having flown uh, all the variants of the E-2C Hawkeye, uh, it's neat to see now as we, as we move into a, a really interesting leap in technology uh, with the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye and how far we've come from the early days of all the development. I think it's important that we recall why we have E-2s to begin with. Uh, they were born out of a requirement for early warning of enemy aircraft approaching the ships uh, at low altitude. After several development efforts on existing aircraft platforms, uh, the Navy ended up uh, deciding they needed a specifically built uh, airborne early warning all-weather command and control aircraft that was going to be carrier-based, and out of that came the E-2A Hawkeye. In 1964, uh, the first E-2A Hawkeye was delivered to the Navy in January on the 19th. The E-2B delivered in uh, 1969 in February, uh, which was basically a modified and upgraded E-2A aircraft, and that's when it flew its first flight. In 1973, on January 10th, uh, they had the first E-2C variant that was delivered. So you can see from 1973 until now, the E-2C Hawkeye has been flying for over 40 years. On September 28th of 2001, the first flight for the Hawkeye 2000 aircraft, which is the E-2C Hawkeye that has the CEC, the Cooperative Engagement Capability, integrated in it. And that was the first uh, aircraft, uh, the first airborne aircraft to have that particular capability. In 2007, we had the first flight of the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye. And then in uh, July of 2010, the Fleet Replacement Squadron, VAW-120, received delivery of the first Fleet E-2D aircraft and then just in uh, the early part of this year, January 3rd, the first fleet VAW squadron, the VAW-125 Tiger Tails, actually achieved their safe for flight transition from E2C to E2D. So a big deal, we have our first fleet squadron now safe for flight and operating with E2D aircraft. We try to boil E2 missions down into kind of just three basic areas. We, we need to detect things, Right? We need to communicate what we've detected in some fashion, whether it's uh, through voice or data link. And then we need to uh, help identify what that target is, whether it's hostile or friendly. So the fact that we've been able to do that consistently and repeatedly improving on that ability, uh, I think has been one of the most interesting aspects and quite frankly for the community, one of the most challenging and rewarding aspects as well uh, because we know that the, uh, the fighters or the ships and the battle group commanders are dependent upon the information that we provide and how well we provide it. The E-2D uh, aircraft itself is a multi-mission aircraft. We uh, provide capability for a number of different mission areas such as anti-air warfare, strike warfare, anti-surface warfare, combat search and rescue, homeland defense, and you, know, you name it, the, the E-2D is going to be out there trying to help out with whatever the mission is. The E-2D is really uh, bringing that aspect of reducing the kill chain to counter the emerging threats. So we're always looking at, you know, what can we do working with the fleet to improve the capabilities that we have now and then improve what we can deliver on in the future. So the E-2's been serving the fleet for a long time and the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye will be serving the fleet for years to come as well.